Hare Krishna, 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 what is called as an authentication and then uh, you know the privacy safety non repudiation authorization etc so cian plus ps is what we we are actually discussing in the context of cssp and sscp etc so what is this park care in hex set okay so we all know what this confidentiality integrity and availability is so confidentiality is a principle by which we maintain the data or the information as secret now what information or data that we maintain as secret depends upon the context of the organization for example um uh, this is one of the popular uh, saying that the highly priced secret in the world is the coca cola recipe now the coca cola's recipe is very important for coca cola as a company but if you look at the mcdonalds okay they have got their own recipe okay if you look at the burger king they have got their own recipe so for every business the confidential information depends upon which is a veritable base for the business okay and let's say for the manufacturing unit the design okay so there's a context of the organization exactly determines okay what what is that what is that we need to secure in the organization in fact if you follow the iso standards the most beautiful thing is irrespective of whether it's an information security management system or the quality management system or service management system business continuity the context of the organization is very important okay and to establish the context of the organization usually we follow the strength weakness opportunities and the threats and weakness and the threats gets on to the risk register okay there is an what are all the weaknesses that you actually find okay and what are the threats that you actually um, you know the discover okay this will, this will get on to your risk register and we need to track it now getting on to the confidential information there are information that needs to be read by everybody okay but uh, that's a publicly classified information now this confidentiality determines the your information classification policy what is that that can be read by everybody in the world what is that that can be read only by employees that's internally classified what is that that can be read by um, a few selected people in the organization that could be a secret and um, you know there is an the, what is what information needs to be secured pertaining to individual becomes your privacy what information can be read only by the top most management becomes your top secret it is not necessarily that you need to have five classification seven classifications etc you can also have three you can say confidential internal and then public it's all fine it depends upon your organization now confidentiality is a principle by which you maintain the information data as a secret so there are two things here okay we have what is called as an um, information classification on the other end we have the subjects who are the users and they have what is called as a clearance so clearance classification determine the confidentiality with respect to the context of the organization coming out of the integrity which information the organization you need to maintain intact okay so there is a system integrity there is a data integrity and source origin authentication authenticity is also a part of the integrity the trustworthiness of the data okay source of the data and trustworthiness the data is still intact whether it has been modified by somebody or not we have a hashing okay for at least uh, confidentiality we have a preventive control which is uh, encryption but for the integrity you don't have a preventive control we have a hashing okay which is detective control when we look at the integrity we don't speak about somebody reading it or not reading it we are not speaking about the confidentiality here we are reading about we are this we are more concerned okay not reading we are more concerned about who can modify and who cannot modify so when we discuss about confidentiality usually we discuss about identification which is followed by authentication which is followed by authorization and then the encryption and for the integrity also we discuss about we need to follow identification authentication authorization and then the hashing now hashing will not prevent it but identification authentication authorization will prevent it hashing is a mechanism by which you will identify whether information has been modified or not okay again we are not speaking about whether somebody can read it or not we are just speaking about whether authorized person can only modify the information or not next comes the availability availability is availability of the data okay availability of data availability of this all availability of service in fact um, um um you know the availability stands on five limbs one is availability of the it availability of the civil infrastructure availability of the supplier availability of the personal and availability of uh, access to the building 
Until 2020, I was actually thinking availability of access to the building is a restriction that could be imposed at the destination. But during the COVID time, we are not able to come out of our premises or come out of our house. So, uh, you know, the availability of access or access to a building can also have a restriction at our own front, but not the destination. Now, this is something which you read in one of the books. Uh, I'll share the author with you on the uh, comment section. It is from APRES. It's, it's a beautiful book on uh, disaster recovery, actually. Okay. Business continuity management, disaster recovery. Coming on to the utility. Okay, utility, authenticity, and position are the three terms that is added to the parquet in Hexer. Utility is the usefulness of the data. For example, the ransomware attack will render data not usable by anybody. How is it actually possible? For example, if the hacker is going to encrypt the data and he is not going to share, definitely he's not going to share with you uh, the key unless or otherwise you're going to pay him the ransom. Okay, the encryption ransomware. Okay, now the utility of the data, data is still with you, but you're not able to use it. That is what the utility is. Utility is a very big subject. Okay, when we when we look at the context of the ransomware, okay, there are advisories on how you can actually prepare yourself to secure yourself against the ransomware, the preventive control and and reactive control. Okay, now that's on the utility. What is possession? Who is going to possess the data? Now, as long as your data center is going to be in your infrastructure on on premises, you possess the data. The moment you decide to go for an external cloud, okay, I'm not speaking about the internal cloud sits on your data center. But the external cloud is going to sit on the cloud service provider's data center. So a cloud service provider is going to possess the data. Now, this is where there is a bit of a concern or a challenge. You don't control the data center and you don't physically know, okay, where your data actually is. The cloud service provider can very well say that your, your data is in this data center in this location, but there is no surety. Usually they don't cheat because, you know, it's like, um, you know, if they cheat, then it's going to become a name shame and they're going to lose on the business. Now, they don't cheat and they have one of the, um, the state-of-art controls for the infrastructure security. All these things are fine, but concern is a concern. I have my child. My child is in the hostel or the school. The hostel has got the state-of-art physical security and it's an excellent school and hostel facilities are amazing, but still child is my child. The data, though it's going to be on the cloud service provider's data center, it is you own it. You want it. This is going to be much more concerning, okay, from, from the privacy perspective. If you're going to be, um, if you're going to be the controller of the data or the owner, you are collecting the data from the data subject, and you're going to give it to a cloud service provider. Cloud service provider will be a data processor. Now you need to have a consent if you're going to do it. So you need to understand something. If you don't have the data in your data center, okay, and you have a cloud service provider uh, use a SaaS application. Okay, you use a pass application, whatever it is, okay, or platform as service from the cloud service provider. If you're going to host your data on the cloud infrastructure and the cloud service pro provider becomes a processor, you need to get a consent for the data subject that you need to do it. This is going to be a bit of an implication, okay, if you're going to have your uh, cloud supporting you. Because, okay, I'm, I'm speaking from the, uh, the consent perspective, okay, consent perspective. The other one is, your implementation of the privacy control is not devoid of the supply chain attacks. Okay, the processor is a supplier. He's supplying the storage for you. He's supplying the computation for you. So, okay, you also need to consider, um, you know, the right to attest, the right to penetrate test. Okay, in fact, uh, the BCA is coming up with a um, separate certification for the third party cyber security that could be really helpful for you to understand the implications if you're going to work with the cloud service providers, not only the cloud service providers, the managed service providers as well. The possession of the data is very important aspect when it comes to Parker and Hexed. When the Parker and actually proposed this, the popularity of the cloud, not sure whether it is there or not, but again, but now it has got a huge implication. Last one is authenticity. Authenticity comes under the integrity. What is the surety that the information that you actually have, okay, is from the authenticated source. Somebody sends me an email saying that you've got 100% hike and I'm going to double your salary from the month of April. I will not believe it. You know why? I know what I am. Okay. So I don't trust it. What is the surety that is from a trustworthy source? Again, there's a deep subject. For example, if you're going to download, because, you know, we, we, we also uh, do VAPT. We also train people on the penetration testing. If I download a tool from an unauthorized source or not from the genuine source, 
I'm going to invite a problem for myself. Even if it is going to be from the genuine source, the genuine application, until I find the vulnerability on that particular application, there's no surety for it. If I'm going to download it, okay, because I know how to superimpose. What I can actually do is I can have nmap.exe, okay, or nmap as a binary. I can create a backdoor. I can superimpose that backdoor. Okay, I can do an, um, you know, I can attach this backdoor to the nmap. I can host it on my website, send an SMS to everybody or send a WhatsApp message or I can do whatever I want to gather the attention of the social media. And I will request them to download the nmap from my source, not from the genuine source. You install it. Inherently, there is actually a common, uh, you know, I'll not say a misconception or common conception that, uh, or perception, okay, uh, that, you know, you, whenever you download uh, any uh, EXE for doing an, for the security testing or hacking, whatever it is, it comes as an Trojan. You need to accept that this can install it. Now, the NMAP file that I'm actually going to give you, okay, from my source, not the genuine one, okay, you'll also have this backdoor. You install it, there is actually a warning from your anti-malware application. You will install it accepting that warning. That's it. You're opening a backdoor for me. Okay, if I am on a public IP, your backdoor will speak to me. Okay, authenticity. Okay, I'm just giving you an, 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 an a share of it. Okay, but it's a very big subject. Authenticity of the document, authenticity of your application, okay, authenticity of the information that you actually receive. Okay, all these things are very important when, with respect to the information security, information privacy. Also, we'll discuss a lot about this. We'll discuss not only about the Parker and Hexet. So there is a, there are a series of topics in which we are going to have a discussion. Stay connected to this channel. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Good luck.